In business and economics, there are two functions that are very important to us, and those are exponential and logarithmic functions. We're going to take a look at those two functions now, as we're going to look at a lot of these in our applications of calculus coming up. So our question is going to be, how do we represent exponential and logarithmic functions. And we'll start first with those exponential functions. And an exponential function is any function where we find the variable the x, or quite often the t representing time, is in the exponent. Two main types of exponential functions. The first is what we call exponential growth. And exponential growth is when the base is greater than 1. For example, if we have f of x is equal to 1.06 to the x power. Because that base of 1.06 is greater than 1, this is called exponential growth. The idea is as we put in bigger and bigger numbers into the function, the function will also get bigger and bigger. So f of 4 will be 1.06 raised to the fourth power. And if we do that on our calculator, we should get about 1.26. So it got bigger because it's exponential growth. The second type is exponential decay. And that's when the base is less than 1. For example, f of x equals 0.98 to the x power. And because that base is less than 1, it's going to get smaller and smaller with time. So if we wanted to find f of 7, that means 0.98 raised to the seventh power which shrinks down to 0.87. So we have exponential growth and exponential decay. And in business, finance, and economics, there is one base that we see quite a bit, and that is what we call the base E. Similar to pi, pi representing 3.14159, e represents an irrational decimal as well. That's approximately equal to 2.718, and it goes on forever and ever, similar to pi. So if we had a function like f of x equals e to the 0.07x, we could find f of 2 on our calculator, which is e to the 0.07 times 2. Let's take a look at how we would enter that into our calculator. On the calculator, if we hit second and then near the number 4, we see the ln key. That gives us e raised to an exponent. And we can type in the 0.07 times 2. And we find out that's equal to 1.15 and so on. So let's estimate that as 1.15. So base e is going to be very important to us with these exponential functions. Usually, base e shows up in more involved functions. And so we might be asked to maybe find f of 5 if the function f of x is equal to maybe 15,000 plus 20,000 e to the 0.75x. So that means we're plugging 5 in to the function. So we have 15,000 plus 20,000 e to the 0.75 times 5. So on the calculator, 15,000 plus 20,000 times e, which we hit second ln to the 0.75 times 5, we end up with a result of 
8654. So that's kind of how we can plug values into exponentials, whether we have growth or decay or this special base of E. One thing we might be interested in being aware of is how the graphs of exponential functions work. And to set this up, let's uh, establish a couple rules that are kind of absolutes. If f of x is some base, we'll call it a raised to the x power, what we know is f of 0 is a to the 0, which equals 1. That means we get a coordinate that falls on every exponential of 0, comma 1. We also know that f of 1 is a to the first power, or just a that base, which means at when x is 1, the y coordinate will always be equal to the base. Another interesting point is looking at f of negative 1, which is a to the negative 1, which moves the a to the denominator, which means when x is negative 1, we get the reciprocal of the base for the y coordinate. And so if we put this information together to try and figure out what the graph looks like, let's say we've got uh, 1 up here on the y. Somewhere up above is a. And then somewhere down below is going to be 1 over a. We know when x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is a. And when x is negative 1, y is 1 over a. And so we end up with this graph that starts out flat and level, but then after it goes into the positives, it's going to start to shoot up very fast. So with that in mind, we could try and graph f of x equals e to the x. Because we know one point is at 0, 1. We know when x is 1, we get just e. And remember, e is approximately 2.7. And when x is negative 1, we get e to the negative 1 which is 1 over 2.7, somewhere between 1 half and 1 third. And so if we put this together, we get the point 0, 1, 1 comma 2.7, and negative 1 comma 1 over 2.7, so between 1 half and 1 third. And then when we put that all together, we get the graph of e to the x. And what's important to note about these exponents is the bigger the exponent, means that we're going to have faster growth. And similarly, the smaller the exponent, the smaller the growth. So if we wanted to graph three functions, we'll start with e to the x, and then we'll graph e to the 2x, and then we'll graph e to the 1 half of x. What we'll notice is the bigger the exponent, the faster the growth. So e to the x goes through 0, 1. It goes through 1, 2.7, and negative 1, a little less than 1 third. And so e to the x is this function here. But if we do e to the 2x, now when x is 0, y is still 1. But when x is 1, we end up with e squared. And that's going to shoot off much steeper. 
And when x is negative 1, we get e to the negative 2 instead of just negative 1, which makes it smaller. And so the bigger exponent tells us that the growth happens at a much higher rate. Similar with the e to the 1 half x, it's only going to go half as high as x grows. And it won't level off quite as fast. And so e to the 1 half x, smaller exponents, smaller growth. And so we can definitely see steeper graph is associated with the larger exponent of 2x. More shallow graph has to do with the smaller exponent of 1 half of x. So that's these things called the exponentials. The opposite, though, of an exponential function, the inverse of an exponent is a logarithm. So if I've got b raised to some exponent is equal to some answer, that is the same thing converting it to a logarithm of what we call a log base b of the answer is equal to the exponent. It's a rearrangement of the parts to solve for the exponent. So we can rewrite exponentials as logarithms. For example, if we have 3 raised to the x power is equal to 2y, we can change this to a log where 3 is the base of the problem, 2y is the answer, and it will equal the exponent of x. It doesn't matter what the pieces look like. For example, if the base is e and the exponent is 4k minus 1, and the answer is 7, we can rewrite this as the log base e of the answer 7 is equal to the exponent of 4k minus 1. Now, this uh, specific logarithm that we're working with here, a log base e, because it's so common in finance, economics, and business, we don't ever write log base e. Instead, we will write a natural log of the 7 equals the 4k minus 1. And when we see natural log, that implies that the base is already e. So we'll never write log base e. We'll write ln, which represents natural log, as a log base e. I'm going to come over here to the side just so that we can keep these examples on the board. As I look at doing the opposite process to rewrite problems as exponents, so if I have a log base 3 of 2x minus 1 is equal to k, we can rewrite this as an exponent. Because the base is 3, the exponent is k, and it equals the answer of 2x minus 1. Let's do one more. Let's say that 2y minus 4 is equal to a natural log of 3x plus 11. When we see natural log, we know that means we're dealing with a base e. Natural logs are equal to exponents. So the exponent is 2y minus 4. 
and that's equal to our solution of 3x plus 11. Now, hopefully, you remember these logs from your days in pre-calculus. And what's important about logs and working with them is knowing how to use these log properties. And there's three very important properties that we're going to use, not just today, but to help us make some calculus problems easier to work with. And that is, if we've got a log, we'll call it a natural log of a product a times b. That's equal to that same log, natural log of a, plus the natural log of b. Similarly, if we have a natural log of a quotient a over b, that's equal to the natural log of a minus the natural log of b. And that kind of makes sense if we think about it, because logs are exponents. So negative logs, like the minus b, represents a negative exponent. And negative exponents move things down to the bottom of a fraction. So that kind of works. When we have the natural log of some number raised to an exponent, that exponent can move out front. So we have b natural log of a. And that's probably the most powerful of the log properties that we have. We can use these log properties to either combine logs together or to expand logs out. And that's what I want to take a look at in this next example, how we can expand these problems. If we have the natural log of x cubed times y to the fourth, because the x cubed and the y to the fourth are a product, when we expand, it's going to turn into a sum. But not only that, the exponents of 3 is going to move out front. So we have 3 natural log of x plus the exponent of 4 moving out front gives us 4 natural logs of y. We can extend this to the natural log of x squared y to the fifth over z to the fourth w cubed. And as we expand, the product on top are going to give us positive logs. The stuff on the bottom will give us negative logs, because negative logs mean negative exponents mean move to the bottom of the fraction. As we do so, each of the exponents are also going to move out front. So let's try and do this in one swoop. We have 2 natural log of x plus 5 natural log of y minus, because it's in the denominator, 4 natural log of z minus, because it's in the denominator, 3 natural log of w. And so in this way, we can expand logs out to give us many small logs. And sometimes that's more convenient, because those smaller logs are easier to work with in our calculus applications. But sometimes, Having too many logs is a problem, so we want to combine the logs down to fewer logs. For example, if we have 4 natural log of x plus 2 natural log of y minus 5 natural log of z, we can write this as a single natural log. Remember, the 4, the 2, and the 5 can go in as exponents. Using our exponent property backwards, we get x to the fourth y squared over, because a negative log is a negative exponent, moves it to the bottom, z to the fifth. How about we try this one? The natural log of x squared minus 9 minus the natural log of x plus 3. Well, when we combine subtraction, we know subtraction means a quotient of logs. So we have natural log of x squared minus 9 over x plus 3. And I'm tempted to see if that reduces. Notice we've got the natural log of a difference of squares, x plus 3, x minus 3, over the x plus 3 which means the x plus 3's divide out. And for our final simplified answer, this is the natural log of x minus 3. 
Notice we cannot distribute log through the parentheses. This is not lo natural log of x. This is wrong. Don't do this. Wrong. Don't do this. This is not the natural log of x minus the natural log of 3. That's wrong, because subtraction would mean the same as division. That's the natural log of x divided by 3. We don't have that. We have x minus 3. Never distribute log through parentheses. Only use the log properties to expand and contract, which works with products and quotients, not adding and subtracting. OK, now that we've introduced these log formulas and functions, we're ready to use logs for, with, for what they were designed for. And that is to solve exponential equations. And the trick here is we have the ability to take the natural log of both sides of an equation. So if we have e to the negative 5x plus 2 equals 70, we can take the natural log of both sides to get the exponent, to get the variable out of the exponent, because an exponent moves out front. So we're left with negative 5x plus 2 times the natural log of e. But remember, natural log and e are inverse operations. Those go away, leaving just the natural log of 70 on the right side. Then we can solve really quick by subtracting 2 and dividing by the negative 5 to get the x alone. Be very careful on your calculator, though. The natural log probably opens a parentheses. We need to close the parentheses when the natural log is done. Also on the calculator, we need a parentheses around the numerator. So a parentheses around the numerator, natural log of 70. Close the parentheses on the natural log, minus 2. Close the parentheses on the numerator, divided by negative 5 to get my answer for x of negative 0.4497. And we've solved for the x. Now, this natural log of both sides trick is really nice. But the truth is, most problems are not that straightforward. First, we have to isolate the exponent first. So if I have a problem like 5,000 equals 100e to the 0.08t, and we want to solve this exponent for our t, first we need to isolate the exponential part and get rid of all the other stuff. So we have to divide both sides by 100 first to get 50 equals e to the point 08t. Now that the exponent part is alone, we can take the natural log of both sides. That moves the exponent out front, so we get 0.08t. And the natural log of e is an inverse. That's gone. Equals the natural log of 50. Dividing both sides by the 0.08t, we get the natural log of 50 divided by 0.08 equals t. Remember, the calculator is going to open a parentheses on the natural log. We need to make sure we close it. So we've got the natural log of 50, close the parentheses, divided by 0.08. And we end up with 48.9. t is 48.9. Let's do one last example that might be a little more involved than that one, but not too bad. Let's do 25 equals 50 minus e to the point 003t. 
Again, we want to isolate the part with the exponent. So first, we'll subtract 50 from both sides to get negative 25 equals negative e to the 0.003t. Then we can get rid of the negative by dividing both sides by negative 1. And e to the 0.003t equals 25. Now we've got the exponent part alone, so we can take the natural log of both sides. Move the exponent out front, so we have 0.003t is equal to the natural log of 25, because the natural log of e is an inverse. Dividing both sides by the 0.003, we get the natural log of 25 divided by 0.003 is equal to our t. Be sure to close the parentheses on the 25 in the natural log. Divide by 0.003. And we end up with 1,072.96 equal to t. This has been a really fast review of logarithms and exponents. Hopefully, it sounds familiar from your pre-calculus days. These functions are very important to us in business and economics, and therefore in business calculus. They will come up a lot. So today's homework, please get very comfortable working with them. Take a look at them on the homework, come to class with questions, and then we'll start taking a look at some applications and further uses of these. We'll see you in class.